Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular scheduled council meeting for July 1st, 2019 at 7 p.m. Ms. Burner? Mayor Lowry? Here. Mr. Shammy? Here. Mrs. McKenzie? Here. Mr. Cobb? Here. Mr. Cook? Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Here. Six members present? Thank you. Tonight we'll have the invocation by Vice Mayor Lindsay. Bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight, Lord, to ask for your guidance in the business before us, Father. Father, we ask you to bless this great city and this great nation we have, Father. We're getting ready to celebrate our independence from dictators and rulers over us, which in this country we are free not to have. Father, we ask you to once again check on the victims and the survivors of the tornadoes. Bless our fire and police department, our administration, and everyone in this council, in this room, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I will do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, dropping down actions on the regular meeting 6 17 19. So moved. Mr. Shammy? First. First. Second. Mr. Lindsay. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Sorry. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Minutes accepted, 6-0. Thank you. Then action on the minutes for uh, let's see, special meeting for the Nucleau uh, Building Design Review on 6-19-19. So moved. Shannon? Okay. Second. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yeah. Minutes accepted 6-0. And moving on for action on the minutes of the special meeting for council seat appointment on 6-19-19. So moved. Second. Mrs. McKenzie? Mm. Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Minutes accepted 6-0. All right, thank you, Ms. Burner. And I am excited to move on to communications where we're swearing in, finally, a seventh member of council, which we have not had in, it seems like, a, a year. <laughs> yes, a year or more. So uh, with that being said, I would like to welcome up Ms. Amy Hopkins, uh, our new council member, and Ms. Burner will swear her in up here in front of the audience, please. Yes, speech, speech. <laughs> I'm like everybody else, finally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Miss Hopkins. If you've got any paper, pen, I do. take your seat, okay, please. Thank you.
right, moving on, it says here in the agenda that we are, Thanks. give me, give me one second, Mr. Lindsay, one second. It says we're moving on where Ms. Hopkins will take over the meeting for tonight, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you okay with that? No. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay. <clears throat> Mrs. Hopkins, uh, as I did with the last council member that was appointed, welcome to the Mad House. Thank you. On behalf of council. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. All right. All right, we'll uh, jump down to communications. Um, let's see, uh, waste management price increase with Melinda at now. Uh, Mr. Bridge. You yep. wanna... uh, thank you everyone for coming to council meeting tonight. Thank you for Melinda for, for the drive to come join us as well. Um, we did receive a letter. It was, uh, um, I have it, out here. it was dated early June um, that when the governor DeWine had imposed the gasoline tax, I think takes effect today today um, we knew it was going to have a ripple effect on those that we do business with and one of the first one that came to the board was clearly our waste management uh, contract that we have so we did get a letter um, Melinda had, was asked to come today because the contract terms state that we are to get a 60-day notice before any price increase comes into effect and also that we are to have a public hearing so council can either approve or deny that request the request, the request for increase is um, 24 cents per bill until the uh, contract should expire, and that is um, December 19, December of 2020. So, Melinda, thank Mrs. Antel, thank you so much for coming. We have a podium up there. Um, do you have anything you'd like to say before we get started? Sure. Absolutely. Good evening, thank you, Mr. Bridge. It's good to be here with council and meet some of these people that I've talked to but not had a chance to meet in person. So thank you for the opportunity to talk to you tonight. I just wanted to say that we really value the relationship that we have with New Carlisle. I'm relatively new as your waste management representative. I've been doing this for two years. Um, Tom Terciano was working with Randy before me, um, but it's been a pleasure to step into this role and, and get to know more about your community. Um, I, I just wanted to go over what Randy just said, reiterate it in my words, and ask your um, permission to add this uh, tax that is a regulatory requirement that really impacts our business quite significantly given that we run in a commercial fleet of vehicles. Um, as uh, Mr. Bridge indicated the state taxes on all fuels will increase starting today, gasoline, um, diesel, and compressed natural gas. We looked at all of the trucks that we run across our enterprise to calculate what we thought that impact was per household basis. And I've got details on that, but I'm not going to go into it unless anybody has a question on it. Um, but what we came up with was five cents per unit per month. And that's based on the fact that it takes about a half a gallon of fuel to serve your home for trash or to serve your home for recycling. So the way we get to the 24 cents that Randy mentioned is eight cents per month, five cents to service your trash, three cents to service your recycling since that's an every other week service. And then you're billed quarterly that's how eight cents becomes 24 cents. One thing that Mr. Bridge said that I'm gonna correct, I don't want there to be any misunderstanding, is that because the CNG fuel tax um, is phased in over five years, it's gonna be 47 cents total. It's only 10 cents now beginning today. Um, but it would be 24 cents per invoice this year. And then as we get into July of next year, we'll have two billing periods left, as he said, before the contract expires. And that rate would then go up another 8 cents because on July 1st of next year, they're going to phase in the next 10 cents of the 47 cents. So just here asking permission to add that 8 cents to your monthly invoice. Again, it'll be 24 cents because you see that quarterly. Um, it's a little for you, but it really helps us keep our cost in control and keep our rates affordable when it comes time to negotiate that next extension with the city. So thank you very much, and I will answer any questions from council. Council, any questions? No. 
All right. Well, we appreciate you coming. I hear you had to come out of state to make it here tonight from <laughs> Indiana. So we thank you for making the long trip. Uh, you know, it's, you know, like you said, it's, it's hitting police departments and obviously the, the trucking company and UPS and FedEx. So it's, I mean, it's, a, it's kind of a bummer, but it's understandable at the same time. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, 865 million a year for roads and bridges, which we obviously desperately need. Right. So it's, it's the right thing to do, but it does have a huge impact to us. How many vehicles, just out of curiosity, do you know does Waste Management have ballpark? Do you know? Oh my goodness, I don't know. Um, okay. I really it's, it's okay. I was just couldn't curious. tell you. Uh, I'm uh, sorry. That's no, okay. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay. I think uh, there's over 100 drivers just in the unit that serves our area. Your area. Okay. Right. Thank you for coming this evening, uh, Ms. Antel. Uh, the question I have, if we don't pass or agree to this increase on our trash cycle uh, for the citizens, what impact will that have in our relationship between the city and waste management? Well, we come asking you to do so um, just based on the fact that we feel it's very legitimate and not anything we could control. Like I said, I believe it keeps our costs in line so that we're not dealing with such a big gap when we come to negotiate the next time around. We can't force you to do this tonight. Um, it, it's just something that really helps us keep our costs in line and we would ask that you would please consider it. We're asking all of our customers, our competitors are asking their customers as well. Okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Cook. Being somewhat familiar with most waste companies and the contracts that they do give to cities, I was a little bit surprised when I looked at this contract and saw that we needed a public hearing to okay this. Most contracts will put into those price increases anything as far as these type of taxes and it will be automatically absorbed by the citizens. Here we do have the opportunity to do a public hearing and give a, I guess the word is an okay or a no on this contract. I think that based upon the fact that we have no way to, I guess, say no, because this is something that was not as a result of waste management. It wasn't a result of something we did, meaning the city. So I have no problem with the increase. All right, thank you, Mr. Cook. Council, any other comments? Ms. Hopkins, for the first time. <laughs> I just wanted some clarification. When you said 24 cents per bill, you mean per household for like you, you bill quarterly, so it's an extra 24 cents every three months per Correct. household. And then we're gonna have an eight cents increase um, next year. In July of next year again. So you would see on the July, the invoice that starts the period for July of 2020, you would see 48 cents. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Hopkins. Council, any other? Mr. Cobb. If we have some people who don't recycle, they get charged the same? Yes, sir. You can have my recycle can back. Because <laughs> I will not recycle. We can pick it up if you don't want it. I mean, huh? if it's in your way, that's perfectly fine. I've been trying to get it up for almost a year. Oh, well. All right, Mr. Mr. You finally Kyle. got the right person. <laughs> wrong, wrong discussion. We can definitely get into that later, though. <laughs> Any other questions? Mr. Lindsay. Ma'am, I, I would request, if you have them with you, to make sure all of us has a business card. I only have one business card with me. Um, I can either verbally give you the information now so that you can contact can me, or you'll share it. I can share it. Okay. That would be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank no you. problem. I apologize for that. I looked in my purse to give one to the gentleman that I'm sitting next to here, and I only have one other one in there, so I know for sure that I can't comply unless you would like my one, and I'd be happy to give that to you. <laughs> I, believe, I, I believe you got to cover your increases, didn't you? Hey, man, you got to cover your increases. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Lindsay? 
proponents from the public for the public to have input? Well, yeah. um, well, are you? After you sit down, are you staying for a while, or are you gonna, or do you need to leave? It depends on if you need me. I will be happy to stay as long as you. What need I would me. like to do is, if you can hang around for maybe another twenty minutes until we get to the comments for the public. Sure. If they have any questions, then. That would be fine. I shouldn't I'd be, be happy too to long. do that. All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. All right, Mr. Bridge. All right. Let me get City Manager's report. That was your worst. Yep. 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 Came on me real quick here. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming and I'd like to share with you the city manager report. And since it is the first meeting of the month, we do not have any department reports. So I'll just start with the city manager. A uh, new city building. Um, we had a special meeting on June 19th. Council did approve those minutes this evening for that. And there was a general consistence from council uh, from the city council to remove uh, council chambers from our new building design. However, that was not done off of a formal vote. So at this point in time, I would suggest, uh, recommend, and ask one member of council to make that motion to remove city uh, hall uh, council chambers from our new building on South Main, uh, North on Main Street. Mayor, Vice Mayor Lindsay. Uh, I'll make that motion that we remove uh, council chambers from the new city building and uh, keep them here until such time a, another building presents itself to, to the city that we can purchase. Second. Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mrs. Hopkins. Yes. <laughs> can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Mr. Cobb. No. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? No. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion accepted, five to two. Thank you. Moving on with the city manager report, our new, Car new Carlisle health stats is attached. Please review those if you would like. Again, we have some upcoming legislation. We have assessment legislation coming in August, and that's for your street light assessments. Uh, if we cut your grass uh, over the course of the year, um, we have abatement assessments and also public nuisance abatements uh, assessments. And public nuisance abatements are for those who maybe leave trash cans or some other uh, unwanted material in the front yard uh, that we go and clean up. So it is uh, different than an actual grass abatement. But we do those yearly in August, and those are right around the corner. Uh, we also have the new hire policy and the, also the employee handbook, both items we are still working on. Um, community garage sale, community cleanup, and fireworks show. Um, first off, a very big thank you to all city staff, volunteer, and Clark County deputies who helped out with that event. Uh, but I think we all need to take a moment and really think, uh, thank Councilman Cook and Councilman Cobb for the hard work that they have for two years in a row have put into this event. Um, all I do is negotiate the contract. Um, I have not put a lot of manpower into this. It's these two council members right here on the end that really took it under their wing. And compared from last year, last year was a great show. This year was even better. Um, so gentlemen, for you two, I thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to put this on for the community. And I think that our community is glad Mr. Cobb, I also would like to thank Mrs. McKenzie for her help and little McKenzie. I can't remember his name. It's okay. <laughs> but no, he did help. Yes, he did. And, you know, he got up there and done what he had to do. <laughs> thank you. And moving on to the city manager report. We have a unique agenda tonight. It is, as we can tell, it's very full. Um, we do need to break rules of council tonight, and, and that is for the purpose of we need a particular ordinance to become effective before the resolution is uh, effective. So um, since the resolutions are first, we need to have council make a, uh, make a motion to break rules of council to vote on ordinance 1916 first. And what ordinance 1960 is, we have our police levy com coming up. We're going to try to put it on. The, we want to put it on in November. Uh, so we have a couple cycles if it doesn't go our way. Uh, but that levy was only for a five year period. It was not continuous. So what we have to do is we'll get to a little more explanation when we actually get to the legislation piece. But ordinance 1960 has to be amended first because that deals with our tax code. 
and then once they vote on that then they can go right behind it and then do resolution which directs the county uh, board of elections to actually put it on the ballot uh, 2020 tax budget every year i get the question asked what is a tax budget well we are one of the few counties in ohio that require a tax budget and all the tax budget does is says these are the funds that we get property tax <laughs> revenue from maybe gasoline tax all the levies that we have on that you citizens so graciously pass or fire levy, stuff like that. What that does is we compose this nice document, then we send it off to our county auditor, and a couple months later, around September, October, they give us our what we call an estimated list of resources for 2020. And that is how we build our 2020 operating budget. We say to them, we're gonna get $135,000 in property tax revenue. They take that figure, they look at what they need to look at, they even say, nope, you're getting more, which is what we hope for, or sorry, you're gonna get a little less. But it's really their final say with those particular type of revenues, the property tax, the levy that we have to go on. And that's essentially what the tax budget does. It is overall the very first process and that's getting to our 2020 budget. What is hard to understand about tax budget is we have not closed our 2019 operating year yet. So we're basing off assumptions of what kind of revenues or expenditures we are going to occur in 19. So when you look at the 2020 final numbers, they are never accurate and they usually end up a lot better than what they're uh, suggested on that tax budget. So that is just a quick synopsis of what a tax budget is. Um, on special on 7 15 19 i am requesting a special meeting of council at 6 30 p.m um, to have a public hearing on that tax budget and that is required by our charter so i would like a motion to set 7 15 of 2019 at 6 30 p.m here at smith park shelter house a public hearing for the purpose of reviewing hearing comments and approving the 2020 tax budget mr mayor mr vice mayor so moved Second. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mrs. Hopkins? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Can you put a legal ad in the paper? Yes. Thank you, you, can you repeat what you said? Review, uh, comment. Right. To review, discuss, and comment. To review, discuss, and accept public comment regarding the passage of the 2020 New Carlisle tax budget. Okay. Purpose, place, date, at 6.30 p.m. Hey, Randy, yeah. Mr. Bridge, keep looking up. It's up there. It's up there, I know. I, I wrote it on the thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really this smart. It's always right there. It's like <laughs> All right, uh, waste management. Already had a public hearing, but I did put a copy of the letter in the packet. Um, so if anyone would like a copy of this, Please see Peggy Eagleson. She's my assistant for this evening, and we appreciate you for that. <laughs> now some good news. I have attached a 2019 city debt profile. Uh, I am happy to report that this administration and this council, uh, as for, for the second year in a row, maybe the third year in a row, we've actually paid off some debt in full. Um, so I'd like to share that with everyone. It's your hard-earned taxpayer, taxpayer dollars that allow us to do this. Um, but we just uh, paid off our fire balloon, fire truck balloon payment which no one in this room had anything to do with, but we were left with to deal with. And basically a balloon payment is at the end of X amount of term, whatever's left over, you pay in full. Well, we did not know that balloon payment was in place. Um, so we had to refinance that a couple years ago. Well, at the last council uh, budget work session for 19, council and I got together, figured out a way that we could pay this off. So I am happy to report that we just paid $114,805 a year tax dollars to our fire uh, truck balloon payment. And we also paid off $23,000 debt for the backhoe that the streets, uh, water, and wastewater departments put as well. So that is roughly $140,000, $150,000 of debt that we have paid off. So what that does, when you look at um, our, how much we pay yearly for our debt that we occur, in 2018, we paid $566,132 a year on all our debt. 2019, we paid $650,561. Of course, that high number is due to the debt that we just paid off. But because we paid off that debt, our 2020 uh, yearly debt payments are going to be $493,096. So we have shaved off a large, a good chunk of that yearly debt assessment. Um, and I also has uh, attached the 2020 projected debt schedule as well. So council can use that, the citizens can use that 
when we start our 2020 operating budget. That is all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council. Mr. Cobb. You paid off the one of the loans? Yeah, fire truck balloon payment loan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bridge, I just had one. I don't know if you can give me a ballpark answer on this. We're just kind of out of the left field there. Uh, where are we at on, I know we've talked about it numerous times, but the uh, Twin Creeks infrastructure, how, how, what was the year on that one? 2026. Okay, I couldn't remember. Thank you. Yep, we pay about 70, 80 a year, but all that's going to go down every year because we refinance those bonds right. by 2018. So um, every year it goes down just a little bit, but we are projected to pay those off in 2026. It's actually not too far away. No. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council, any other questions? Okay. Yes. Okay. All righty. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. And now we'll go to comments from members of the public. Please go to the podium if you have any questions or comments, your name, address, and try to keep it right around five minutes, if you could, please. Or if you have any comments for waste management while she is still here. It's pretty soft. Ma'am? Can you go up to the podium so we can get it on record, please? I don't know if your hand might. No? Oh, okay. Go ahead and speak as loud. You're good. I didn't. Okay. You're good there. So it's not a bank-owned house, though? No, this kid that you pay for taxes. It's been empty for, for 35 years. No one has lived in it. It's okay. 1976. Okay. Are you, are you familiar with this location? I will look at it. Okay. We'll have uh, the city manager uh, and uh, he'll... Uh, What's the address of that house, ma'am? Ma'am, do you know the address of that house? Okay, so yours is what? 21, Prentice. And that's the rear of the house? Whose backyard does it go to? Sure, but for us, we, we, if we can't see it from the front of the road, yeah. we don't have, we are not legally allowed in the back of someone's house. So if we need to photograph that for the violation, we are going to ask to have access to one of your guys' backyards so we can actually oh, basically yeah. get a picture of it. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I said, yeah. Yeah. You're not taking pictures for you. Yeah. Um, is, do you maybe need their, maybe you I, I, I talked to them prior. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I've got pictures that it should happen Okay. All right. We'll, uh, we'll let Mr. Bridge get into it. And he's, he's pretty good when these type of issues pop up. So thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you for coming tonight. You said 317 prints for the structural issues and mold. But what again was the address for the grass? Uh, I do. 320. 320. Okay. 320. Ladies, th thank you for coming. It, it's, it takes a lot to come here and be on camera to do that. So we'll definitely uh, 
look what we can do and I will keep you posted as the remedy. Before you leave, can you give me your, I know Ms. Taylor, you said you left me a voicemail on my desk phone. Ms. Taylor, did you, you said you left me a voicemail? And did you leave your contact number on there as well? Okay, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Uh, anyone else from the audience, comments or questions? All right. Ms. Antno, it, just letting you know if you would like to leave. <laughs> no, you guys need to vote on the increase. You need to stay for it? Well, yeah, good call. I think. Good point. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving down, uh, committee reports on the night resolutions. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Can you guys do a motion to approve or deny the waste management stuff so she can go? It's yeah. not a legislation piece. Council. I'll move. Mr. Cook to approve. Approve. Mr. Cook did a approve. Second. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Lindsay. Or, I mean, <laughs> sorry, Mr. <laughs> Shammy. Okay. Mr. <laughs> okay, Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mrs. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted. Seven zero. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Mr. Bridge. Thank you so much for coming down. We really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. We appreciate you coming to Carlisle's business. If anybody needs me, he knows how to find me. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you very you. much for coming. Have a safe drive safe back. Your travels Thank back. You very much. Take care. Thank it's you. Good seeing you again. All right. Well, now, drop down the resolutions. Ms. Berner. Um, this is where we need break rules of council Correct. to vote on Ordinance 19 16 first. So moved. Vice Mayor made the motion. Second. Mr. Shammy. Okay. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mrs. Hopkins? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Oh, I'd love to say no, but yes. <laughs> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion accepted, 7-0. So we're going to move down to D, Ordinance 19-16, Public Hearing and Action tonight, and Ordinance Amending Chapter 881 of the New Carlisle Codified Ordinances to levy and continue an existing one-half of 1% 1 tax on income, the continuation of which will become effective for a term commencing July 1, 2020, and continuing for a period of five years thereafter. Thank you. Council, any discussion, questions, comments? Nope. An explanation? Yeah. You want to explain? Um, like we said earlier, 1916, our police levy was only for five years. So when they went back in uh, 15, 14, when it was first put on, we actually had to amend our tax code to state uh, what the ballot measure was going to be. Well, when we amended it at that time, we didn't put, it was only for five years. So it was an indefinite period of time. So the current code states it's going to end July 2020. So what we're doing now is just adding that language back in to extend it for another five years. And that's simply what this legislation piece does. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Council? Ms. Berner, when you're ready, please. Um, who was the first? I didn't. No, it's not. What's that? No one made a motion. No one made a motion yet. I didn't oh. hear anyone. My bad. So I'll move. Second. I'm getting all flustered tonight. Second. Second for Ms. Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm tired. This is tired. <laughs> when you get here, Miss home, McKenzie. Can you catch <laughs> Lindsay we McKenzie? Have, we had a very busy weekend in the city of New Carlisle. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone's watching from home, we have a valid reason. We're all tired. Take him to the pool and drown him. I apologize. Miss McKenzie. Oh, oh, yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Good now? now? You're redder than me now. <laughs> Mrs. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Motion accepted 7-0. Now we're going to jump back up to A, Resolution 19-10, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action tonight. 
A resolution specifying November 5th, 2019 as the date for amendment of Chapter 881 of the New Carlisle Codified Ordinances to levy and continue an existing one half of 1% tax on income, the continuation of which will become effective for a term commencing July 1st, 2020 and continuing for a period of five years shall be passed and directing the Clark County Board of Elections to conduct the election. And an explanation to this resolution, uh, council just amended our tax code to allow for the dates to be changed. What this resolution does is directs the Board of Elections to actually put it on the ballot. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Council, any questions or comments? Oh, my bad. Go ahead. All right. No council? Motion accepted. Yeah. Say, Mr. Cobb has the first. Second. Who was the first? Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor had the second. Had the second. All right. The first was Mr. Cobb. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mrs. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Motion accepted 7-0. Thank you. Dropping down the ordinances. Looks like we have uh, four with action tonight. Mrs. Burnham, are you ready? Okay. Our first ordinance, 19-12, an ordinance amending Chapter 208 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, regarding public meetings. Mr. Bridge? You guys motion first. Yeah. Then so I get my explanation. My mistake. Council. Motion for ordinance 19 12, public hearing and action. Mr. Cook. Okay, second. second. Mayor Lowry. Okay. Explanation no. of this. No, Mr. Cook, Mr. Oh, Mr. Cook had the second. Okay. Uh, explanation of this ordinance, um, Parks and Rec bylaws are coming up next, but uh, Council has authorized Parks and Rec bylaws to act on their behalf and make decisions. With that being said, they have to be included in the Public Meetings Act, and this is what this does. It actually adds the Parks and Rec Board to uh, have open meetings, and they are subject to the laws uh, as any other Board of Commission is in the state of Ohio with a notification of meetings. Council, any questions or comments? Ms. Byrne. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mrs. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Motion accepted 7-0. Moving on to ordinance 19. Dash 13, an ordinance amending part two, title eight of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, regarding boards and commissions. Council. Make the motion to accept 19 13. Second. And an explanation of this uh, ordinance. This Ordinance establishes our Parks and Rec bylaws. It's something we've been working on, but we had to actually amend our code to put their bylaws in it, and that's what this ordinance does. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I make the motion to strike out four letters, four words, five words, out of the board's bylaws. Being section 278 08, part B. The words I would like to have be moved because they are not in any of our codes or anything at the present time. The sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression. <laughs> Everything else is protected under law on state and federal levels. Doesn't mean you can't protect at the local level. We don't have an ordinance to 
to uh, change that at this moment. So you're making a motion. Make a so you're making a motion to strike those. I am making a motion to strike the one, two, three, four, five, six words. Okay. Council. Second. Second by Mr. Shammy. <clears throat> Mrs. McKenzie. No. <laughs> Mrs. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb. No. Mr. Cook. No. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Lowry. No. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion fails four two three. Okay. So we go back to. Mm -hmm. the Do other we have ones? any comments on right. any Ooh. other ones? Can I make a comment? Mrs. McKenzie. I don't understand why you would bring that up as a, uh, an issue after we've spent, oh gosh, I don't know, a year and a half going over these bylaws. And that's been in there the entire time. And there's been no question about it since today, you decided. Obviously, ma'am, I did not see it or I would have brought it to everyone's attention earlier. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Disappointing, to say the least. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. McKenzie. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor. Council, any other comments before we move to the vote for the <clears throat> original? Ms. Byrne. Okay. Mrs. Hopkins. No. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. No. Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Motion passes four to three. Thank you, Ms. Burner. When you're ready. Okay. <coughs> All right. Moving to ordinance 19-15, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a financing agreement and any other required documents for the unappropriated project amount necessary for the payment of the wastewater influent building upgrade project and equipment. Council? Any? Mr. Oh, no. Mr. Cook is the first. Second. Second by Mr. Shammy. Okay. I'm going to let uh, Service Director Holly take this one. Uh, the explanation of this ordinance is um, to uh, fund the unappropriated portion of our wastewater plant. Uh, the current operation funds of the wastewater department is going to fund $250,000 in cash currently. And then we are seeking to approval to possibly finance up to uh, $250,000 uh, from New Carolina Federal Savings Bank, and it is in a form of a construction loan, and that would possibly cover $60,300 for if there's any change orders. As I had stated in a previous council meeting, I hope there are no change orders, so we would not need that. And also as a construction loan, you only pay interest on what you uh, draw on it. So um, right now we are looking on 12 weeks order time for the equipment. So we're gonna be pretty close to the end of the year and the goal is to use more operating funds and less financing. But at this point to keep the project moving, I need to make sure that the full fund balance or the full bid amount is covered 100% with change orders. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Um, council, <clears throat> questions, comments on this? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Mr. Kitko, uh, a year or so ago, we had some discussion on the waste plant, on the equipment you're wanting to replace. At that time, I believe you told me that this could be done on a two-year note, possibly, with $250,000 down. You said we had that much money at that time. Uh, it's been at least a year or longer since we've had that conversation. Is there any more money set aside for it besides just the 250 now or not? When we did that 250, we had set the budget for 2019. Very so right. that, that would have been last fall. Okay. Um, and um, one is we had other pump go down, so we had over 25,000 go into uh, a pump, standby pump, un unanticipated. 
So there's other things that have broke down there that would, didn't allow me to add an additional amount of money, but there is still four, about 40,000 in the capital improvement that's sitting there that I'm kind of holding for an emergency basis. And if we don't have any emergencies going towards the end of the year, then I will apply that amount of money, cash additional, to this project. So you could apply uh, 290 to it? Potentially, okay. yes. I mean, possibly. Yeah, I can't take the account to zero. Nowhere yeah, near I, zero. I understand that. Uh, can this be done on OT or not? Um, uh, I know. Uncomfortably, was. probably. I think it's more comfortable for a, maybe a three, maybe a four. But that that's where I think we're setting our limits is probably um, no more than five. But comfortable-wise, it, it's... I can't put us in a hole for that low interest rate. But looking back at our previous conversation that we had at the sewer plant, and correct me if I don't remember this correctly, but I <coughs> believe you said that we could do it on a two-year note and we could make a $125,000 payment in two years to pay it off and that would not be a problem at the time we had that conversation. There are always possibilities to do that, but I will tell you I will never put a roadblock in front of myself to say I will definitely do something when funding is, is unknown at times and with water and wastewater plants, there are unforeseeable things that go wrong that I, I can't see today. So I, I, don't, I won't ever tell you that I can definitely do something with that unless I had a cash balance of Let's see, the, uh, their, their budget is about 900000 You should have approximately 900000 of an operating sitting in there. Then I would tell you, I got it 100%, no questions asked. The only problem I have with doing any financing over the two year, because that has stuck in my mind, is we have made great strides here in the last actually since Mr. Bridge has been the city manager and, and I've been on council to pay cash for things as we go. Absolutely. You know, uh, we, we don't finance anything for the police department thanks to the citizens and the police levy. Uh, again, thanks to the citizens and the fire levy, we're buying a new medic. You know, we're paying cash for that. The, uh, I know those are different funds. The, uh, I think our debt is somewhere a little over $8 million. I had it written in here, but I can't find it. Uh, maybe you have some insight on that, our total debt? Well, all the, all the debt right there is on the 2020 and 2019 debt schedule, which you've had for, for a weekend. So yeah. probably you could probably look at that and get a better understanding well, of where we stand with it. I had yeah. added a couple of things up, and sure. that's where I came up to the 8 mil, a little over 8 mil. Sure. So personally, myself, I'm not interested in doing anything over a two-year debt. And uh, and so, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to make a motion that we amend this ordinance to uh, specify it to a two-year two -year note, uh, no more than three. I will go an extra year, even though I don't really want to. But you, can I, can the, I? You don't know what the revenue is going to look like in the wastewater department in 20. You don't know how the year is going to end. You don't know what revenue we're getting in in 2020. You don't know what revenue we're getting in 2021. <coughs> the reason why we finance this stuff is so we don't have to immediately raise the rates on the residents. If we're gonna do this over a two year place, well, you're taking a gamble because you don't know what you're gonna receive in 2021. Mr. Kitko may have described it as a two year note. Things happened, we had a pump go out. There is, it is not good use of taxpayer money to do what you are trying to do for the sake of not going into debt. Wastewater departments go into debt all the time. Water departments go into debt all the time. The reason why we do not finance anything for our police is because there's a levy that pays for it. The reason why we're paying off debt in the fire department is because there's a levy that the voters voted on for. When you look at these type of loans for these big public service projects, what we are doing is being the most responsible with their taxpayer that we can do. The shorter amount of time we note this out, you're putting more of a risk on your bottom line. You're putting way more running a risk of how much you're going to receipt in the years that we don't know about. 
by loaning that out, you preserve that bottom line. And it hats off to you for thinking outside the box. I'll give you that 100%. None of us wants to go into debt. But well, sometimes debt is positive debt. In this situation, it's positive to debt. It's a very low interest rate. We're only going to charge interest of what we take out. I know how that's still on there. Really works. So it's not well, like we take out the 250, we're paying interest on it. We take out 250, we take nothing out, we're not paying anything. We take out $10,000, we start paying interest from the date of that $10,000 when we withdrew it. A, two, a, a, six months later, we withdraw another $20,000 from that 250. We start paying interest on it then and there. So we actually done our due diligence with getting a good financing package that's going to benefit the citizens without having to, A, take money out of the general fund, which is going to require an increase in your rates for your sewer. Sorry to interrupt you, but I think that there should be a little bit more explanation as to why we're doing it this way before you try to make a motion to derail what we've put together that we think from the administrative side is the best thing moving forward for the city. Do you have a package put together from financing yet? I got an email, but I have, I have not seen. It's just a dollar amount and um, an interest rate, I think, 3%, three, 3 and some change. But it's a construction loan, so anyone who's built a home, you know how a construction loan works. And just may I add one more thing? You will never see police fire, well, fire pretty close, a project unlike water or wastewater. My last project was 800, 859000 This project's 440. They are just not cheap. Um, one bar screen, as we had described, is 285 without labor alone. So that 285 and one piece of equipment is half of the annual, uh, say, amount that the police bring in. Water wastewater is not cheap to operate. You know, mm -hmm. there's no way around it. And so I have to figure out the best way to not let, you know, maintain the equipment, not let it go too long, and keep it fixed so things don't get expensive down the road, and then you have major projects. But these things have been in 40, well, they went in in 1980, 82, I think they went online. So we've had them for a long time with very minimal cost. Well, and I'm sure sometime within the next, this is July, sometime between now and next July, I'm sure there'll be an ordinance before this council or the next council to raise wastewater rates, you know, on a progressive thing like we did to the water rates. And I still think a two-year note would work possibly a three-year note. So I'm still gonna make my motion to amend <clears throat> this ordinance to include no more than a three-year note max at whatever percentage rate you can get the construction loan at. I understand that the construction loans, they work, you only pull money out and that's what you pay interest on from the date you pull it out till you get it paid back. I understand how those work. Uh, Vice Mayor Lindsay, if yes. uh, Mr. Shammy has a question, if you were a comment, if you were. Oh. In, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I agree with everybody. Is uh, it a five year note? Order. I think we need a second or something before we ask questions on the motion. Is it on the motion? It's, it's for. We're on the ordinance. What? We're on the, we're on the motion, so we'll okay. go. We'll look for the second first. We need, we need a second before we have open it up to comments. In fact, our exchange right here, we shouldn't have happened until after that. The second forward of the motion, to <clears throat> drop it to a two year, possibly three. Correct? I'm second. Yes. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Shannon. Say whatever I wanted to say. Okay. Can we ask questions? Yeah, just a minute. Yeah. Good? Yeah. All right. Okay. Or, Mr. No, Mr. Shammy. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. I agree with everything. It's a five year note, you said? There is no term. Oh, it's it's whatever we feel is financially feasible for the department. Okay. So what would you think in your, how fast we can pay this back? I'm sorry. In, in, in your head, how fast can we pay this back, do you think? Because see what Vice Mayor Lindsay is, uh, he's, he's saying he doesn't want the city to go through what, you know, he doesn't want something that happened in the past. I'm not saying with this administration, you know fiscal watch or anything like that. He, he really wants to, you know, make sure we're doing this right for the city. It, it, nothing, nothing on anybody, but I think that's how he feels. 
I think that this council, I mean, it's, it's common for water and wastewater departments to do what we are doing. It, that's just, it, it, it's how it is, I understand it's concerned, but I, I can't understand why it's not understood that when these big ticket projects come in, you're gonna to have to finance them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the city, way, that, that fund does not have the revenue to pay for this outright. I mean, it just doesn't. And that's why we're in the position we're in. But, but we're paying oh, hang on, Mr. Lindsay. Hang on, Mr. Lindsay. Front, right? Because we, Mr. Lindsay, we saved on, a couple please. years for it. Sorry, sir. Mr. Shammy, you I'm good? Done. Yes, thank right. you, thank you. Ms. Hopkins. Now, <clears throat> the only problem I have with it, I understand these big ticket items, and I've sat in the council meetings when you discussed this before. What I have a problem, and this isn't really a reflection on everybody here now, but it's what happened in the past. We would say certain terms, or we would have funds going for something, and then they would go somewhere else, and it didn't go where it was supposed to. If we had, see, you know, and the terms, I think three years is decent, but then if you go four, you mentioned four, maybe five, and to me, that's extending it too far, you know. If something happens, I've been here when you've had to come back and ask the council to approve more money. And if something happens, we have a three year and you have some type of emergency, can you come back and ask, you know, I'm new, so I'm asking you, can you come back and ask for money instead of making this like a four or five year project? The only time that, since I've been city manager, we had to allocate more funds was mm -hmm. last year to our law department fund yeah. because of all the stuff that happened here. Um, this is an enterprise fund, and state law in Ohio says it's an enterprise fund, so all the money that's going to be used for this particular project by law has to be used in wastewater funds. So we can't take any of this money and put it in the general fund. We can't take any money and put it in the water. You know, um, but the thing with that two-year note, say you have, we put 250 down. A three-year note is one so you, I mean, it, it's a, a short-term financing. Yeah. Okay. I would advise council to maybe look at the history of the ending fund balances of the wastewater and know every year you're not going to have enough to pay it off. You're not going to have the money to pay this off in two years. It's not happening unless the general fund steps in. Now the problem with that is we don't know how the general fund's gonna be after, uh, for the police levy. The police levy does not pass, we lose half a percent of the operating revenue, that goes back into the general fund, we are back into square one. So you have to look down the road, you have to look at where your financing coming from. If the council so chooses to make this a mandatory to your notes, we will have to probably seriously look at raising rates immediately to help pay for that two year payoff date. Mm -hmm. And at 3%, I'll take that interest rate any day. But what about three years? Because I said three years and you kept saying two years. Because here's the thing, say we do okay. it for four years. Mm -hmm. We have the money in three years, we, we pay it off, we're done. But if you, the long, the put, the, you're putting yourself in a box, is what you're doing. You're putting yourself in a big box by saying we'll have it done in two years. And that's how we're gonna write the agreement. We don't have the money in two years. We still got to come up with it. So, I can, anything else you want to add before they do the? No. The, the only thing is, um, as you just saw, we paid off the backhoe and the fire truck. Uh, well, the backhoe was a year early. We paid this year in 2020, so we paid it off a year early. As you can see, that's our goal. So if we did a, if we end up saying we did a four-year note, there is no early payoff. You save all the interest if you pay it off early. That's the goal. The goal is, we, I, well, I would say I can't do it in two years. 125000 in a year based on what we have for information now. I can tell you what the final construction cost will be when the project's done and go, here's what our balance will be, and then there's what the terms will be because we're only at 100000 not 250. So that's, then, then we could look at that, okay, 100000 over two year, let's go ahead and make it a two year payoff <laughs> term instead of four. So there's, there's options. It could be three or four and just go, um, let's just pay it off early if we can. And I think he, uh, Mr. Bridge has shown proof that that's the goal with two of our um, items. And I know we've been looking at our back truck, jet truck that we purchased a couple years ago. 
to do that also this year was a goal. I invite council and people in the audience who have the council a pack copy of the tax budget. The paint turn to page 16 on that. It's fund 502. That's our wastewater operating fund. We are projected to end 2020 with $17,000. So that should give you some insight as to now we'll probably end up a little bit more. I'm not saying I'm inspecting probably all 20 more on that. But that should give you an idea of how much extra money you have at the end of the year for your wastewater teams. So the shorter amount of time that you do your financing, the more money you're going to come with in yearly time. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a struggle for the wastewater to pay it back in such a more short amount of time, based off the numbers that we're looking at right here. We did end up 2019 with 71,000, but we um, we were projected in this year with um, about 71. But that's not including, I don't have the, the revenues in front of me. But I mean, the details for the um, expenditures is in front of me. So that's something we have to look at. And you look at your ending fund balance for 2018, it does say 420, but that's because we held off on doing this project to help save money, to pay a lot of cash for it. So out of that 420, we saved a good deal of it to help put towards the 250 for the down payment. But history should tell you it's going to be tough for us to pay that off in, in two years. Ms. Hopkins, anything else? No, that's it. Thank you for explaining that. Mr. Cook. You know I'm sitting here listening to all of this. We hired these people as the administrators. We put our faith in them. We depend upon their logic. Why are we sitting here second guessing what they're doing on a day to day <coughs> basis? If you want to get rid of them and you seven of us want to run this, I think it's going to be a pretty poor situation. Thank you, Mr. Cook. I want to jump in before we get to you, Mr. Cobb, because I was in line actually <laughs> next, but um, <laughs> you're last. <laughs> I mean, to, to me, the way I look at it is you, you, just, you bring it down a level to something more simple like a car or a house and you're buying a house. I mean, you know, our jobs are for the most part, our paychecks are usually pretty set in stone depending on your job. So, uh, I mean, unless you lose your job and you do something stupid or get fired, you, you can, you're usually going to get an increase rather than a decrease. This is completely different because it can t completely fluctuate. So, uh, you know, Ms. Hopkins, you were mentioning you know, we could come back and, and look for more if we need it, and it's that simple, but it's also just as simple to, to go with what they're saying, in my opinion, and pay it off early without all the hassle and the headache and, the, and you know, all the, the paperwork that has to go with coming back to, to look for more funds to do so. I mean, if something was to, you know, like Mr. Kitko said, drop out or uh, something needs replaced, then you're paying, like you'd said, you're, you're putting yourself in a box because now you've got these high payments for a short amount of time, which is great, but if you can't pay them, you're in some serious trouble. I, so, I mean, my opinion, and, and I agree with you, Mr. Cook, um, you know, it, it's our job to definitely come here and, and ask questions of the people that, that run our city. It's definitely our, our duty to do so. But at the same time, I, I, everything that you said, for me personally, makes 100% good sense. So that's my two cents on it. Mr. Cobb. If you go to two years, three years, we default. Okay. You're one, you're going to come back to council, can I need I'm gonna need more money. Council's probably gonna tell you no. You said it's three years. What is the penalty on the default? Any idea? We don't like to know no, we don't I, I don't know, but it's not gonna be good. No, I'm yeah, I don't see know. what I'm getting at. Sure, absolutely, 100%. Sure, I, but and, we don't have that. That's it. like playing Russian roulette myself. Nervous. Yes. Good, Mr. Cobb? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Miss McKenzie. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with you, too, Mr. Cook. I, we hired them for a reason. They've been working on this project for a very long time. They've had multiple discussions with everybody on council. Um, to me, there's no reason for us to short ourselves on a loan when we could have a five-year term and, and pay it off early if we're lucky. Um, I don't think that there's any reason for us to do that at all. Thank you, Ms. McKenzie. I want to follow Ms. up. Ms. Hopkins. 
Um, the reason I ask those questions, one, is because I'm new. Two, I've lived in the city for a very long time, and I've seen things happen before. I have the utmost trust in you, everyone that's there, especially Randy and Howard. And uh, when you explained that, you know, we paid those two early, the fire truck, and you're going to try and pay a dump truck. Is is that what you said? No, we paid off the fire balloon payment, and then also a backhoe. So we paid off. The oh, backhoe. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Anyways, it made sense to me, and it showed me that this administration is trying to pay things off and not drag them over a long period of time. So I also think our the council's um, duty is to ask questions so they can understand better than. I'm not trying to attack anyone. I just wanted to make sure you knew that and Mr. Cook knew that. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Any, Mr. Vice Mayor. The, uh, Mrs. Hop Ms. Hopkins said something that uh, I think I need to address with the administration and this council. I am not looking to undermine you guys. No, I'm okay. I'm not looking to say that you're not doing a good job because quite honestly, you have done one hell of a job for this city. I have told you that repeatedly. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I have said that publicly, repeatedly, that you've done an excellent job in saving money, not spending all the money that is available. Uh, the, I know water rates are gonna go up regardless what we do on this ordinance. They're going to go up within the next year, probably sooner. Uh, we've had conversations on those before in this council uh, with in front of the public, you know. Uh, I just, I have to watch the dollars. I have to watch our debt. We are over $8 million in debt. I know $250,000 is like a penny in a pocket of quarters, you know. It's nothing. However, $250,000 to our taxpayers is a ton of money. There's nobody that I know of in this city that makes that kind of money in a year or two. Uh, the, uh, I just lost my train of thought. But anyways, uh, sometimes that happens. The, uh, so I don't want the administration or this council or the citizens to think that I'm attacking you or Mr. Kirko or anybody else in the administration by asking about this and would like to see this, quite honestly. I understand you can get a loan and you can get it for 100 years and pay it off in two if you want. I just would rather it be done quicker than later, in my mind. The, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, the, Mr. Mayor said that you know, people have to work on their income. This city is projected to have over one, I think it's $1.3 million in the general fund at the end of this year. So quite honestly, I don't see the problem with a two-year note, and if the general fund has to kick it in next year a little bit, then the general fund would have to do that. I really, I don't have a problem going with the three-year note, like I stated earlier. I would prefer a two, but I would give the little ground and go to a three. A five-year note, in my mind, that for $250,000 is just ridiculous for a city with our budget and the, and the amount of money that we're going to have projected. I ha have to keep saying projected because Randy's looking at me like, you don't know that. But we do know that. We have, that, we have those figures, barring anything that the city don't blow up. I mean, you know, there's all, you always have these things, but it... I guess I'm just talking against the wall now. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, I call for a vote on my motion. On the uh, amended motion. If I may ask to have the clerk reread that motion so we know exactly what I think I said. Ma'am, you got it okay. you clear? I think I do. Um, so you, you made a motion to amend the ordinance to a two-year, no more than three-year note. Right. And you were, the second was Mr. Shammy. I think so, yes. Yep, and so Mrs. McKenzie. No. Mrs. Hopkins. I 
I'm going to say no. Mr. Cobb? No. Mr. Cook? No. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Well, since I made the motion, I'm going to say yes. Mayor Lowry? Uh, I'm going to say no. Mr. Shammy? I'm going to say no. Okay, motion fails. Okay. One to six. Now we're going to go vote on the original. The original. Okay. Uh, my first was Mr. Cook, and my second was Mr. Shammy. So, Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mrs. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted, 6-1. Moving on to ordinance 19-17, introduction tonight, public hearing. An ordinance amending and repelling ordinance 17-14, and actually this will not show up at our next council meeting. It was put on the agenda by mistake. Moving on to ordinance 19-18, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 7-15-19 and ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020 and submitting same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Would you like me to read other business? Please. Okay. Other business, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. Our crime watch meeting will take place Wednesday, July 10th, um, 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. The city offices will be closed Thursday, July 4th and Friday, July 5th to observe Independence Day. Thank you. I'm um, going to other business. I had a couple things I wanted to go over real quick. Um, one, and I wanted to get some feedback from council real quick. I don't want to take up a lot of time, but I'm asking for some help on this. Speedway, the old Speedway property. It's, it's, but I, I, me personally, I would have never supported Speedway building a new location if they were going to just let that sit the way they're sitting. Um, I have you know no problem with them letting it sit for a little while, but I mean, it, it's not even like they're trying to do anything with it. I know it's listed on their uh, their um, proper, their site that they have for prop vacant properties or things that they've gotten rid of, and it's, uh, I can't remember what the price is. This is an astronomical price. Um, but I mean, it, it looks horrible. There's no sign out front that's even stating it's for sale. I was wanting to know what council thought about and if we could agree to maybe ask Mr. Bridge to uh, maybe shoot them a letter and just- We've uh, exhausted everything we can. We had them take down their canopy. Um, the building's not labitated. It's not falling apart. They're actually using it as a training facility slash storage facility. Right. So there's nothing in our codes that can go and force them to say, you need to change the use of your building. Right. Uh, we, there's nothing that says, we can ask them to clean it up, but if you're asking for any legal stuff behind us to force it, it's going to be difficult. Well, no, I'm not saying it's more of an eyesore as in like there's graffiti on it, there's holes in the roof, or glass is broken. But I mean, just the fact that everyone knows it's empty, it's you know, it's slowly deteriorating, not horribly, but I mean, I just I don't think I've ever seen anybody train. No, I, I haven't either. So I mean, if you truly feel it wouldn't do any good, but I mean, I don't know if it would be something that they would maybe even just. I don't even know if we got donate to the city or something. Just and then we get rid of it. I know we don't, but I mean, if you if you put that council piece of chambers. if you put yeah, council chambers, if you put that piece of property for a decent price at that intersection, it should go quick. I mean, there's numerous little businesses that could make something good out of that property that wouldn't be a gas station, which I think is one of their uh, uh, stipulations. You can't turn it into cigarettes, out you know, alcohol or something like that. But um, that's all I had to say. <laughs> Mr. Cobb. Mr. Mayor, I got several things I want to address oh. here. Okay. Was you going on a different subject? Yeah. Can I finish my other one? Okay. <laughs> I'll go right okay. ahead. You're I thought you were on the speedway subject. No. Okay. I'll give up I'll, on that I'll, one. I'll, I'll, Mr. I, I, can, I can write a letter and just say, hey, from our community pride standpoint, can we put a little effort into maybe plant some bushes or something? It's a very right. visible corner. Right. Uh, but I believe me, I've looked at our codes. I know this has been a topic of concussion for a while. Right. I'm not. Say, I'm not saying it's a code violation, but yeah. just like I said, I, I mean, I don't even know if it benefit to have a for sale sign out there. Is there a chance they? Could, I mean, 
Speedway is raking us over the coals for gas. They can lower the price that day. <laughs> I mean, let's be real here. I like to think they're holding on to it because they're kind of rethinking my uh, suggestion as to keep them both open. And then, because that one on the other side is just crazy. It is. I mean, it is busy. Yeah. So maybe they will reopen that one up for the uh, north traffic um, on 235. Not holding my breath. We can always write a letter, ask them to do stuff, and I will do that, absolutely. I mean, just really just kicking kicking up the dust and saying, you know, any new ideas or is there any interest in this building? You know, just something like that, mm -hmm. my opinion. Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, we, Mr. Bridge, we had some conversation, I think, in council about that building, I don't think maybe a year ago, uh, when we found out they was using it for training mm -hmm. and stuff. And I, I can't remember, it was a long time ago, the conversation. Does that fall within, the, they're using that for training and stuff, does that fall within the scope of the zoning of it? Well, the thing is, it's, it's, it's either central business zoned or general business zoned. When I put my money on, I say it's central business. Okay. Um, and that just opens, it's a very vague, yeah. It, it allows for a lot of different uses, um, given the business type it is. Even if it is zoned general business, you still, called general business, so that should give you an indication of how kind of loose it is uh, as far as that use goes. Um, but um, like I said, we can always reach out and send a letter, um, but the codes are our legal authority to do things. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean in the future we can't pass new codes. Now the thing about it is, is that it wouldn't really apply to Speedway because they'd be grandfathered in, but it would prevent something like this happening in the future. Speedway, um, you know, they're a locally, they're, they're a community player. So let's just try some more letters and then maybe get some council signatures on it as well. Um, and then we'll take it from there. They did work with us and get the canopy down. So um, we'll see what we see what else we can get from them. Never hurts to try. But I, I had heard that the canopy was broken and was ready to fall anyway. But it was a safety issue because that, yeah, now that's the code down. that we, if, if we yeah. could enforce our code saying it was a safety, it's a structural issue. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And my other subject, you touched on it once already. I just want to go back to the fireworks. Um, you know, amazing job, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Cobb, Mr. Cook, and all the council who was up here when we did the budget and put that in. Um, you know, another key player in that. I don't know how many you know, Fab Metals made a really nice donation to help make that display what it was. Um, so without, and, and they're a big uh, player in the community. They, they've always been there for the city doing things for our deputies and uh, things like that, uh, sports teams and whatnot. But just something I, you know, just something real simple that I'd never really thought about fireworks the way I did until we started doing them. Is you know, you know, when you're younger and you don't think about fireworks other than just through there to look, you know, pretty and stuff, but you don't realize the impact they have. I mean, we're really selling our city when we do this. Uh, I didn't get to make it up towards Arrow Queen and IGA, but you know, again, I heard there was just massive numbers. Um, you know, uh, Pizza Plus, uh, Arrow Queen, uh, the food trucks. Uh, so, you know, it really, it's, you know, it's really not, it's, it's an advertising tool the way I actually look at it. I mean, I know we're doing it for uh, the reason of, uh, you know, Independence Day and Fourth of July and to bring the community together, but it's also a great advertising tool. And I think for uh, what we budgeted and spent on it, I mean, it's, it, that money is well spent to advertise our town and, and possibly bring outsiders in like I think it did. So uh, thank you to all the administration for working so hard on the budget and all the council members and uh, everyone who worked hard to make it a success. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to thank Chief Trustee and his department. Also let Chief J Jacobs from Bethel Township know thank you. Mr. Ch or Chief Donnelly from uh, Pike Township. And thank you, Deputy Ray or uh, Allender for uh, the sheriff's you know, I mean, yes, it was a great firework, long, long thing going, I'll tell you that. I'm ready to go home and go to bed after that. <laughs> but, yeah, they were great. They were awesome. And I had, you know, I'm glad we had them. Mr. Hensley loved them. There wasn't hardly any alcohol up, used up on the parking lot. Really? There was maybe, what, four cans and maybe four bottles in the trash cans. Sold out at IGA last year. Yeah, IGA and the uh, uh, drive through sold out last year. There must be a pickup right now with a lot of beer cans in the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cobb, can I comment on your comment? 
Yes, sir. And it ties into Mr. Bridge, and I don't know if you want to even talk about it. Something you had mentioned earlier. Uh, no, good. no, we're not ready to say that. Okay. It's okay. Nothing bad. It's no, nothing bad. For next year. Okay. I just didn't know. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Cobb. I got one other thing, and it isn't due to fireworks, and I'm going to address this to you, Mr. Bridge. Mm -hmm. Do we have an ordinance in the city about grass being blown out into the street? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure we do. <laughs> and do we have a penalty for that, and who enforces the penalty? Well, how that works is we'd give you a violation and give you X amount of days to really clean it. Um, with that, and oh, let me rethink what I'm about ready to say here. <laughs> If we give you a violation for cutting grass, yes, you have X amount of days to do it. Um, I will be honest with you. If we violate someone for grass clipping, yes, it's in our code that you're not supposed to put it in the street. Um, but I don't, it would be a safety thing. We'd have to give some uh, people time to clean it up. So it, I, I know where you're going with it because there's a lot of people who do that. Um, the only reason I'm saying something mm -hmm. about that I've gotten phone calls and it's hot on Facebook right now. Yeah, it is. It's a hot topic right now. Mr. Bridge, can you excuse me? I cut my grass right before the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. But I just thought yeah. I'd bring it up and ask the question. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into it because that's something it's, it, you know, it, it, unless you know how it works, it's hard to explain, but we usually have to give a person, if we violate them, ex some time to uh, remedy the problem. Now, depending, now if this was under our, 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 our uh, criminal code that we have, that's one thing, but I'm almost positive it's not under our criminal code, it's under our property maintenance code, and that doesn't have the same kind of weight as criminal code does. So um, we would probably see if, to see if there's any state law that would require someone to immediately get a ticket and go into court. So it's, it's, it, it, it's unfortunate because I think it does present a, a lot of dangers to people on motorcycles. But I think that a lot of municipalities are just saying, oh, we need to fix our legislation to immediately address this. I know that vaguely answers your question. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, yeah. Still, I'm just trying to find a response to the phone calls that I've gotten yeah. and through the uh, Facebook response. Yeah, I don't think it's, again, it's in our criminal code. If it's not in our criminal code, we would have to violate them like we violate anyone else for having tall grass. And that is, here's your violation. Have it cleaned up by this date. If you don't, then we'll go in and do that. Versus if it was section, our criminal code, I think it's section 600. If there's something in there, we can have one of the deputies say, hey, you did it. Here's your, here's your ticket for it. Here's your court date. Is it on the same subject? Yeah. Okay. Well, some people are blowing it out in the street. Okay. And I guess they've had you could probably answer better than I can. <laughs> you, you, hear, you hear more about it. But anyhow. Uh, is it an ordinance or not? No. Oh, it, 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 I mean, it is, every, every. I find anything that's I mean, it's definitely, an, uh, well, what's your, okay. <laughs> our whole entire codified our ordinances. Right. I mean, right. this is not your only definition of an ordinance that we go through. You know, it is in there. Yes, your grass clippings are not supposed to, but that's in our property maintenance side of things. Okay, that is has different weight on it than if it was in our criminal code. So it definitely is on the property maintenance side of things. I do not, I don't know the criminal code like I know the other aspects of our code. I'm not, it's just a massive thing. If it's in our criminal code, it's easier to sit there and say, Deputy Allender, go issue a ticket for this. But it's, I'm almost positive it's not in that criminal code. It's in our property maintenance. Yes, it is an ordinance, but it's an ordinance that we'll have to give them time to fix. It's not something that we can say, go pick it up now. I think that hopefully clears it up. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. On the same subject, Mr. Yeah. Vice Mayor. It's along the lines of grass clipping, but then in the fall, there's still, I know when I had a bike, I rode it up to the first snow. But in the fall, you have leaves all over the place in the streets and stuff and when they get wet they're actually worse than grass clippings yeah. you know uh, the the grass clippings and i've seen the stuff on facebook uh, and i don't know if there's how many motorcycle riders are in here but you know you don't you don't run through debris on the road at 90 mile an hour like i've seen some of them do and i've seen some of them get a little squirrely you know because they did hit something slick you do that with wet leaves you're going on the ground 
So if, if we do something with grass, then we have to cover all aspects of it. And I don't know how you can uh, cover trees because I know the people, I don't have a tree one in my yard, but you ought to see it in the fall. It's, so it's going, where all these limbs and leaves come from? It, it, it'll, be, it'll be hard to enforce. Yeah, I mean, it would be impossible, I think, to enforce mm -hmm. either one, actually. But that's my two cents. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, but it is your duty as a homeowner to not put your glass clippings in the street. Because it, it really, the, the big, I mean, it, it's unfortunate people wreck on these things, but the, really the bigger problem is by putting your grass clippings, that goes in our sewer system. Right. We have to clean that out before it gets. Okay. Hold on, guys. We've got another council member that's got something that needs to speak. Mr. Cook, I believe, had something. Correct? You did? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to bring up a little point here at the fireworks we were given the opportunity by Mr. Bridge to coordinate the deputies which we did and I thought very diligently however I was apprised Saturday night about a possible charter violation that involved the deputies. I would like to make a motion to have council instruct the city manager to approach Sergeant and in for an investigation into the alleged charter violation in regards to the deputies at that point. And I'll make that in the form of a motion. Second. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mike, uh, Vice Mayor. Mr. Cook, uh, maybe Mr. Bridge, I don't know, but since you there. made the motion, maybe you would know more about it. <coughs> what second, charter yeah. violation was committed by the deputy or your sergeant? Time to ask question, Neither one by them. Then we need more information before we can even act on it. A member of council. Member of council? Yes. And what did that member do? I believe that the investigation will either prove the fact or disprove the fact. And that is why I'm asking for an investigation rather than bring it out public at this point. Then I would... would uh... We have that opportunity for an investigation in the charter, if you so read. Mm -hmm. I, I would would think we would do that in a um, no. no. We can't do that in an executive session. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. nope. Council members, it all has to be done out in the open. Okay. So, what council member was it then? I will not state the name. I will leave that up to the investigation. We have the duty to the investigate through the charter of ourselves, but I don't know if this council can direct the. Sheriff's office or any well, part of the sheriff's office to do an investigation. Well, and in, I, in the way I understand it isn't, well, if he's looking for information from the deputies, we are not allowed to go and ask them direct questions and provide information. We can't do that. It has to be done through the city manager. Yeah, all, they all, all that reports to, to the administration. Um, so you have a motion on for me to conduct the investigation. Yeah, motion and a second. The charter reads, council and its members shall not give orders directly or indirectly to any city employee except the city, no, manager, the city manager as provided by Article 5, Section 503. However, nothing in this charter shall preclude council from initiating and conducting investigations pursuant to Section 410 and Section 503. I rest my case. Are we able to, and I have the motion, I see. Um, for me to investigate with the sergeant um, to see if there's any potential charter violation surrounding the deputy at the fireworks. Correct? Okay. I think it is involving the council member giving orders to a Thank you. I was getting that 
So there is a suspicion that a council member had directed That's contracted correct. deputies. Oh, it wasn't me because I wasn't there. <laughs> During the fireworks or after the fireworks, that will come out in the investigation. Okay. Okay. So any, well, we have the motions, first and second. Any other discussion? Ms. Hopkins? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I understand what Mr. Cook is saying. The, I think if there's going to be an investigation done before we would vote on this, I think council should know who we're investigating. That's what I think. I, mean. I would personally say that that is relevant and irrelevant to the fact of how this investigation will bring out. If the investigation turns out that the council member did something wrong, then we would have room for a charter violation and action to be taken against that council member. If it proves non to be a fact, then the motion, I think, or the action is dead in the water. Okay. <coughs> Council, any other comments or questions? <coughs> Ms. Berner, okay. the vote, please. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. I don't think I can support that. It seems to me like it could possibly be a witch hunt for whatever reason. Uh, I. Uh, I'm going to say no. Mayor Lowry? Um, I could. Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Hopkins? No. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Motion accepted, five to two. Who voted no? Lindsay Hopkins. Okay, we're at other business still. Any other subjects, Mr. Cobb? Mr. Kitt I know our equipment's deteriorating. What I, I mean, the pickup that we use for the fireworks, it runs fairly good every now and then. You'd see the amp, amp, amp gauge drop a little bit. Uh, I'd like to have a list so we can sit down and figure out, just come up with some kind of system to take maybe two vehicles, replace it one year. Next year, replace another set. And on down the line, by the time you finish the last one, you can come back and start all over again. Am I out of line? No, I'm just looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> but come up, if we come up with them figures, the oldest one versus what still can operate, then we can sit here and get together and try to figure out how we can do this. We do. We, uh, we actually look at that annually. The problem is our oldest vehicle may be in a department that doesn't have the most funds as compared to the department that has a lot of funds, has a newer vehicle. So it's hard to look at overall worst to the department's worst and see how that department can fix that one vehicle. Okay, uh, get, bring me a list, bring council a list of the work vehicles in that department. And let's start from there. Hmm. Before one of our employees ends up injured. I'm going to ask for a motion on council for that. Pardon? I need a motion on council. As I need the group needs to direct us, not just one. No offense. I'll make a motion yeah. to investigate yeah. that. Hold a second. Yeah. Didn't you already supply that list? Can you already give them a list of, of vehicles? 
we, yeah. we had a list. He already yeah. gave us a list. Have a list. <laughs> About yeah. a year or so ago. Go. And that's addressed through the CID plan, I believe. Um, we can update it and send yes. it out. Yeah, it's no yeah. big deal. So you're want, so I understand you're wanting an updated list on the vehicle. In, in that department, the worst one, the one that would have money to do stuff like that, versus like Mr. Kiko said, the, uh, let's go to wastewater treatment plant. I'm going to use this for an example. They got a pickup that they don't have the money to put towards it and really fix it. Okay, well, we move on to another department that has the money to fix or replace that vehicle. Hopefully within the next year, we can come back to wastewater treatment plant. They'll have a fund there where we can replace their vehicle. And I think if we can replace two vehicles every year, you keep moving down the line, and once we get to the end of them, just like we do with the sheriff's cruiser, then we can come back and start all over again instead of have one in here in service for 20 years. We can get it. We can update the list for you. And when we're looking at our 2020, we can put it in with our capital. But that's not a problem. Yeah. I mean, sure. I, it's just an idea. We was talking, Mr. Cook and I was talking up here. Yeah. So it's something the council can have a visual on. That's fine. So. We're, we're getting just an updated list maybe when we roll around to, I'm just trying to understand. No, well, updated list by department. Okay. Well, council can sit down and look at it. So do we actually need a motion, motion for that? Yeah, because he asked one of us, he asked okay. my administer, one of my administrators to do something. Okay. Council okay. can't singularly direct us. It has to be done by It's not to run out here and buy anything right now. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, it's right. just an updated it's list. Just to get an idea where to start. Okay. Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Mr. Cobb, I think about do we have, hold on, Mr. Wright, do we have a second on? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Wright. I think about a year ago, if I'm not sure, sure uh, Mr. Kiko can correct me or Mr. Bridge, he gave us a list of all the vehicles and the conditions they was in, by age and all this stuff. And and I thought, well, did you do that? Departments were listed next to it. Yeah. But not in a chronological department order. So I could uh, read. But or, all the I vehicles was there, right? Yes. Right. So we had a list at, at, about a year ago <coughs> to tell us the state of all these vehicles, and and we can adjust when we get to the CIP later on this year or first of next year, whatever it is. That can be added in, or it should be on a rotation. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. We should never have it. Should and, and my understanding was, I forget who told me at one time, the manager at that time or the council at that time had these vehicles on rotation, but obviously it went away about 20 years ago. There's no got money. 20, we got 20 year old, we got 20 year old vehicle. Yeah, we didn't have any money because they couldn't sell out a physical mm -hmm. watcher. Well, all, like, <laughs> like I say, all I was asking for that list and we all simply can right. sit down here and discuss, okay, let's, let's take uh, the street department. Mm -hmm. They've got the money to replace maybe a couple of trucks. Well, maybe one, I'd say. I'd well, I'm yeah. just using this okay. as an example. I don't mean to run out there and buy 10 of them. I hope not. It's something I was going to ask Mr. Kiko for any with an updated list that he did give out because I, I start the budget well or before you guys get it. So it's fine. I, I get you're saying. Well, just I'll have him update it, but I still need a motion because. Uh, You've got the motion. Got it. Okay, gotcha. So we need a final vote on that, but not a problem. We'll update the uh, mileage. I thought you had mileage on it, uh, major things on it, stuff like that. But. So it's just adjustment of how it's laid out. Yeah, yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. All right. And we'll break down a little more user friendly. So it says like wastewater, they have this. Because if you're just looking at an Excel sheet, it's confusing. This will give us something more to look at and really work as a group and try to decide. I think that, I think it'd be an awesome thing to have in the upcoming budget and in our upcoming CIP. I really do. The vehicles in this city is in terrible shape. Oh, gosh. And they have been, but, you know, uh, like Mr. Bridge uh, motioned a minute ago, I don't mean by a motion, motion by his fingers. We didn't, the city didn't have no money to replace these vehicles, you know, and that's why we're where we're at. But like I stated earlier, providing the city doesn't blow up, we should have over about 1.3 million at the end of this year. Now, I'm not advocating taking that money and replacing all the vehicles. These funds, these enterprise funds, has got to be self-sufficient. And if they're not, then the rates will be raised. It's just a, a simple uh, economics. If you 
got a million dollars in debt and you only got 500,000 coming in, the rates are gonna go up right. to satisfy that debt or what we need. And I think the citizens, I could be completely wrong, but I think the citizens would like to see newer vehicles, if not new. And I think every five years it should go, regardless of their condition. Because a five-year-old vehicle, that's about the time they start having problems, and they're constantly on the road. They're constantly sitting and running, especially in the wintertime. Yeah. So, Mr. Mayor, I would move for the vote. Mr. Kuka. Mr. We got a motion for the vote. I still ask a question. We're in discussion. Yeah, I, I move to call for the vote. You call for the vote. Call. Ms. Burner. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mrs. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. All right. Mr. Mayor. Before we adjourn, any other <laughs> questions or comments? Last time. I wouldn't do it. Please. <laughs> Sir. Motion to move to adjourn. Second.